inside the beast, inside the beast. Ahead of me, the great beast roared from the pit. It seemed to be in pain. Its huge mouth opened and closed quickly again and again. A stench came from within. Antanga, what is that thing? I asked my guide. It feeds the group. Wanderer of the wastes. It is our protector. The great ice beast is drift from the frozen north. I stepped forward toward the edge of the pit. Below, the skin of the creature lit up like silver moonlight dancing on black water. The guide hung back, fear in his eyes. The beast roared again, its stench and pain filling the air. What do you want? What do you do with it? I asked the guide. He replied, "We feed it and it returns to it. It feeds us." We place food inside its mouth. The beast will protect what is placed inside it from the desert heat. We then feed from it like fleas from a dog. When you're done, we leave the leftovers from the before the beast. Well, something has made it sick. I said, "I can't tell from the stench that it's ill." Wanderer, what are we to do? Antonio cried. Without the predator, we will waste away to nothing. I turned to him. My jaw set. Someone's got to get in there and remove the cause of the illness. Antonio turned and ran. It's, this probably wasn't the first time the beast had been ill. I almost left my guide and his brothers to their fate. Without the ice pit's power, their stores of fresh food would go back in the desert heat. The beast would soon infect all that it protected. The food would be covered in blooming black mold. But I sighed. The ice beast did not deserve to be eaten alive from the inside. Its only crime had been to protect food to Atanga and his brothers. All right, I'm coming in there. I said to the beast. Its mouth opened wide, and all became still and quiet. What have they done to you now? I asked. The stench filled my nose and mouth as I reached inside the beast's jaws. My eyes began to tear. I started to scrape, scrape orange junk of the beast. Inside, inside the junk was old food and that rotted and oozed over everything. Next, I found what someone might have made for breakfast once. It was hard English muffins, a jug of sour milk, sour milk, and more old fruit. I found someone's leftover lunch too. It was groupy chicken soup. I dried quinsadilla. And many food cups. I removed it all from hidden corners. The worst was yet to come. I found cherry tomatoes covered with black mold. Then I found a box of caster salad, smelling of rotten fish and greens. Last but not least, I found a chunk of steak tucked into the far corner of the great beast's jaw. The meat was coated with thick, fuzzy ooze. I pulled out all this food and threw it away from the beast's feet pit. The great ice beast, as drinks, almost poured. Its breath was clean and fresh again. A tanga meat met me as I came out of the pitch pit. He had a hangdog look on his face that made me feel better. I was tired from the hard work. Came back to you. I said, "Yes, it was our best. We should not have let you go in alone." A tender replied. So, are you going to let it get sick again? I asked, shaking goo from my left hand. No, we will take better care of the best. A tender said. I wiped the goo on a tree. What are you going to do? We will put the put in the best only what we can take out. We will not fill the best with leftovers that won't be eaten. Those who do not follow the rules will receive no food from the best, but must feed it all the same.